this. What's going on guys? So I am doing a deck profile of Chaos Swarms because somebody asked in a video that I posted a couple videos back and they said they would like to see this again. Now not, not much has changed since the last time I posted a Chaos Swarm deck profile and it's a deck that I like to play though I haven't played it recently because I've been testing a lot of different decks and newer decks. But with that being said, it's pretty much the same but I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth of different cards you could play. Um, and I know there's a new version of Light Swarm that's going around that's being played but and that's probably better than this deck, and um, I think um, Asian Persuasion has a video of his deck profile, which he did pretty well on, so go check that out if you're curious about a more meta Chaos Sworn, I mean, not Chaos Sworn, Chaos, I mean, Light Sworn deck profile, but this is Chaos Sworn, so I'll show you what I have for Chaos Sworn. I'll show you some things you can take in and out and still be good. So right off the bat, we're gonna, I'm going to list two Card Trooper now. This card is not needed. You can take Card Trooper out, you can still play the deck just fine at 40 cards, but... I was finding that having Card Trooper out, while yes, it is a 42 card deck, and the only reason why it's a 42 card is because I couldn't take out anything else. It, like, it felt like I, I couldn't fit this in any other way, but this is why I like it. It's a first turn mill 3, um, if you can get it off, unless that you know you get Veilard or something else destroyed. But And then when he's destroyed, you draw 1. So you get to dig technically 4 cards into your deck, 3 cards into the grave, mill 3, and then you draw a card when it gets destroyed, and you have 2 of them. So it can dig into your deck pretty quick, and you have a lot of other cards that mill, and you can dig it pretty quick. But that draw one is what does it. So you mill three, which you already dig three cards in, so that's already minus the... So that's into... You already turn it into a 39-card deck, and then when you get destroyed, you get to draw a card for himself as well. So he replaces himself, and you get to mill three at first turn. It can kind of speed up the deck, but if you want, you could take him out, or you could switch him out for Curry Bandit. The reason why I don't like Curry Bandit, because he leaves you exposed. So that's the only reason why I don't like him, but hey, if you want to play Curry Bandit, Curry Bandit's really good for this because you can grab your monster recarnations and solar recharges and things like that. I just don't like the exposure that you're given. But otherwise, um, this is player preference. I like Card Trooper, but Curry Bandit would also be another good option here if you want to, or you could take it out altogether. I'm playing three Gores because you don't have much protection from this deck. It's, it's kind of more of an OTK deck, I would say. Even though you're trying to consistently abuse JD, it can become OT. It's more of an OTK type of thing. Uh, when you usually get your play off, you're not more drawing out the duel. You're more or less winning within the next turn or so, or you're not, and you're going to lose. So um, to counter that, that little lack of protection that you have, really, uh, three gores kind of helps you out. I mean, you can usually bounce back plays, and it's not like you're always going to have a gores in your hand, but being able to have one, and he's a dark, and you need darks in this deck, it works out. Three Chaos Sorcerer because we're playing a Chaos deck and he helps you abuse Eclipse Wyvern with our other Chaos monsters here. So, and his effect's pretty good and he combos well with Plague to get a Belze. Uh, BLS because we can play him and he's badass and once again he's a Chaos monster. So it helps us play off our Eclipse Wyvern plays. Three Plagues because you can abuse him with pretty much every card in this deck to some degree. Uh, Phantom of a Chaos I threw in because it's nice to use Phantom of a Chaos as effect for like Chaos Sorcerer and stuff like that if you need to get rid of a card. And it's also a dark, so it can become useful. Um, one dark flare. You don't really want two dark flares, but you still want something that has a chaos ability, and you don't really want to play three light pulsars because you also want a dark monster. So one dark flare works out nice, and you can still combo well to make like a black rose with plague or something if you need to after you special summon him. Uh, two light pulsars, you can use his effect just fine with that. Three Raiden because he's like your card trooper, except better because he's a tuner, and he combos well with Lumina to make Michael. So, you can do all that. Uh, three Luminas as well. Two Lylas for popping off cards. Two Minervas because I like its effect that you get to mill off a card when it's sent to the graveyard. So, that's always nice. And it's a tuner. Uh, one Aaron and one Jane. Playing three Eclipse Wyverns, three JD, and then three Solar Recharge. Two Charge of Light Brigade and three Monster Recarnations. Now, if you don't already know, playing the three Monster Recarnations. So... Even if you get JDs in your hand, stuff like that, or if you go turn without it, yes, you can mill your monster recarnations. You can have duels where you never get into it. But with the drawing that you have just from playing and the solar recharges, um, you can usually get a monster recarnation in your hand and be able to get a JD. And usually all you need is one JD to start going off and just clear your opponent's field, and then you can summon other monsters um, quite easily to start just going off. Because if you got JD to your hand, it's probably by using some type of effect like um, with like Pulsar, BLS, or something like that. So you can start just start popping off. On um, the extra deck's not really anything special or bad. I mean, I got a Leo, Trish, two Belze, two Michaels, um, a Hot Red Archfiend, which could go over here. Um, a Black Rose, two Goyos, and then I don't even have a level um, 
just one to go with card trooper really, but and then the level five isn't bad. Um, I have one Phantom Strike Bouncer, a Minerva, the Exalted, uh, Beast Dweller, uh, one one, and the Cowboy. You could probably take up the Cowboy and put a Castell in there or something else. Now these are the cards I'm gonna go over, and I'm sorry, I feel like I'm out of breath for some reason. <laughs> Uh, that could be useful for you, um, and things that you could play, um, and I don't actually have the account. You could throw it, if you want some extra protection or something, you could somehow take out some cards if you're not a fan of the Monster Reincarnations, uh, Monster Reincarnations, I would be, I would advise you to either throw in Breakthrough Skills or Allure of Darknesses. No more than two Allure of Darknesses, though, because the chances are you're probably going to mill one, and you only really want to use one, um, to speed up the deck a little bit. But yeah, Breakthrough Skill can be very useful to prevent your opponent from doing things that will counteract uh, the plays that we do have, which are very simple plays, but th the, they can be strong when they go off. Uh, you could play Raigeki if you want, but I feel like you, since you have JDs and they are Raigekis plus the Heavy Storms in themselves, you don't really need to play it, but hey, if you want to play it. Like I said, I already said earlier, you could play Curry Bandit and place a Card Trooper. But now these two cards we're going to talk about because Dark Armed you could play. And it, it is a good card, especially since you can set up your graveyard quite easily by removing dark monsters to make it so you could use dark armed. But at the same time, dark armed, there's been a lot of times where it's cloggy. Um, since we do play a limited amount of darks, sometimes I can go off on a play and I only have one dark monster in my graveyard. And it's enough to go off with my other plays, but then dark armed is just kind of dead in my hand. So dark armed is good. It's one of those player preference things. I have it here because it is something you could definitely play, but it's something I'm not really a fan of in the deck. So... I'm currently not playing it. Now, when it comes to Red Eyes Metal Dragon, I've seen people in the past when when this was more of a Chaos Dragon deck, which people could say this is more Chaos Dragons, but I'd say this is more Chaos Swarm than Chaos Dragons. Um, it's a little different in my eyes. Um, some people play Red Eyes, other people are against it. I'm more of the against it. It's not that's a bad card, but usually I don't want any of my dragons banished. I mean, why would I banish a Light Pulsar to special summon this? And yes, I know I could special summon another dragon from it. Um, but usually I'd want to go Plague into Light Pulsar and go Belze, which is a better card than Red Eyes, has more attack and better effects. Um, you could banish an Eclipse, but usually I want to use Eclipse Effect to get a JD to my hand. So, you could play Red Eyes, especially if you were playing a more Chaos Dragon variant, not Chaos Sworn, but for me, Red Eyes isn't what I would play in the deck, but it's still an option. I'm not saying you're bad if you play it, it's there. I just thought I would list it just so you know that, hey, if you don't like something in here, if you're not a fan of Phantom of Chaos, throw Red Eyes in there. If you don't like that many gores, take one out, put a Red Eyes in there. Something. If you want to play Red Eyes, play Red Eyes. But yeah, guys, this is the deck I play. Um, it hasn't really changed that much. There's not much more to change it. This is just usually what I play when I play it. And it's not the best deck in the world. It's it's an OTK deck, and my, all OT decks aren't usually the more meta thing. And I've already said this before, if you want to see a more meta, light sworn variant deck, go check out Agent Persuasion's video. Um, I think he just posted, just search Agent Persuasion light sworn, I think it's the one he's posted in the last month or so. And it's a pretty cool deck profile, and I forget, don't, I'm not trying to say anything bad here, I forget what exactly, where he topped at it, and how far he did. But from what my understanding was, he did pretty well. So check that out if you want something more meta. This is more, I would say, surprise deck if you took it to a tournament, OTK. Um, not saying you could win, but you could also do bad. It's, it's uh, sometimes a luck of the mill type deck and luck of the hand. So you could do well in it, but you could also do terrible. And some people could really own you with it. And then other people, if you got the right matchups, you could own them, which is like any tournament. So you might want to take some changes and make a good side deck. This is not a side deck. These are just cards telling you to play. But yeah, it's a fun deck. I like it. Let me know down below what you think about it, what you play, if you've played it before. I mean, most people have seen me play this a few times. Maybe I'll post a duel with it again later. But I feel like I've outdone Chaos Sworn on my, on my profile. But somebody asked for a deck profile, so here's the one for 2016. Well, that's all for me, guys. I'll see you later. Peace. Damn. Uh.